Good morning to you there, Lillian. Indeed, we continue pitching tent in Diani, particularly in Kwale County, where it is the kickoff of the Council of Governors, or rather Governors Induction, that kicks off today all the way to Saturday. And of course, uh, right now, like you've put it, governors, uh, some of them have already uh, made their way into the hall, while others are, you know, concluding their breakfast before now the, uh, the, the, the session kicks off. Uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta, the, uh, expected to be the chief guest, uh, to officially open this uh, session that uh, uh, goes up to Saturday. And of course, uh, several issues expected, like you've put in the relationship between the governors, uh, county governments, uh, the national government, as well as uh, donors. We have seen a lot of, uh, you know, uh, uh, interested uh, parties of devolution making their way to Diani also to attend this uh, session. And of course, uh, the, the challenges that devolution had encountered in the first term of devolution, remember, uh, devolution came, uh, you know into conception in uh, 2013 uh, then uh, for five years uh, governors at uh, first governors of devolution have been able to take uh, these uh, the, 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 the steer the wheel of devolution for five years and for now we are going to the second term other governors uh, lost uh, their job uh, after the august eight polls while others retain for instance, in uh, central Kenya, we have uh, Governor Mwangi Wairia being one of uh, the governors or, or the only governor who retained his seat in the larger uh, Mount Kenya region. And of course, uh, devolution came with, uh, you know, a lot of uh, challenges. And right now, I'm joined by uh, Mwangi Wairia, the governor for Muranga, just to tell us, governor, what are some of, um, you know, the challenges uh, being the second term governor now? What are some of the challenges that uh, first governors encountered in putting up structures uh, thank you very much i think uh, we encountered a number of uh, challenges yes. uh, we encountered a number of challenges but i think uh, those challenges were overly not unexpected because this was a changeover in the in the way this uh, country is being governed it was a change of system of governance from the centralized to the devolved system uh, of government and uh, everybody says that uh, this was the most radical uh, change in governance nearly the whole world. So whatever we went through was actually expected. And I think uh, in, the, in, the scale of, uh, in, the, in the scale of what happens in other countries, we've gotten feedback that, that this was the best managed transition from one system of government to the other. So uh, I, I would by and large want to say that those were settlement uh, challenges. Uh, there were challenges which are about to come with any uh, change of system and, uh, and also the whole issue of skepticism, uh, the whole issue of uh, loss and gain of power. You see, it might be some section feeling like uh, where we are likely to lose some power because uh, some functions have gone the other direction and uh, others feeling well. Uh, we don't think we've gotten full power or full authority as we had expected and i think that was the uh, that was the jigsaw uh, that, that, that that was the issue mm -hmm. the, the whole issue of losing some gaining some mm -hmm. wanting more uh, interpreting the constitution it, it was just all about that mm -hmm. uh, but uh, they have, uh, then given the fact that uh, those issues were happening within a political environment mm -hmm. then the political side of everything uh, magnified everything and everything was being blown into 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 an issue of well there is war between this uh, part of government and the other mm. but basically it was fairly normal mm -hmm. but then the political reins uh, was able to keep to keep magnifying things let's talk about the county assemblies who really play a key role also in devolution and muranga county is one of the counties that also saw a lot of friction between the executive and the county assemblies but all the same we saw you know a truce at the end of it all how did you manage uh, the county assemblies and what could be your message to the new governors, a uh, rope of governors coming in. Uh, yes, and I wouldn't call it a lot of friction. I, a lot of settlement issues. You know, everybody, each arm of this government was this each arm of government was trying to find its space, and this is the first time that we had 47 assemblies. You know, uh, since independent, uh, originally there was a senate and the and the, and the national assembly, the, the upper and the lower house originally, which survived, uh, which didn't survive for long. So by and large, since independent, we've been having only one assembly. Mm -hmm. You can now imagine the shift from one assembly to 47 assemblies and uh, and the whole cultural change from local government of our, our local authorities to now fairly structured legislative assemblies so uh, the first crop of mcs definitely uh, they came from uh, from the broader uh, from the broader environment 
uh, where the previous uh, councillors had come from, uh -huh. because this was this was a this, it was a transitional uh, period. So we faced a lot of issues. First of all, uh, the issue of experience, uh, the issue of exposure, uh, the issue of even knowledge, and also the issue of uh, the issue of power. Those are the factors which were at play. Uh, now that there was an assembly and the whole the whole thinking that mm -hmm. assemblies were meant to be dependent. Uh, from the executive so that they can offer sight over the executive. So some assemblies overplayed that role. Mm -hmm. we, we you see, see they, they over magnify that role mm -hmm. and it became a competitive uh, uh, sort of a game. Mm -hmm. The executive the executive arm of counties, counties competing with the legislative arm. And uh, before we found our place, I can tell you a lot of damage happened in terms of service delivery to the people of this nation. We saw, we saw in the budget, the Auditor General budget raising a lot of issues in terms of, you know, uh, county assemblies, uh, you know, going to exposure abroad, using a lot of money in terms of going to do benchmarking across. Do you think some of those were justified? Or was I, it I think, I, think I, I like being very genuine because I've made very few trips outside. I think sometimes these things are exaggerated in terms of travels. People are overspending in terms of travels. Because I think if you want to benchmark on daily farming and there is a, a neighbor or a local farmer who is very good uh, at daily farming, then you need to make sure that you get your people to that level, that local level, before you go to Israel to benchmark. Because there's no point of going to Ethiopia to benchmark about coffee if you have not, uh, if you have not uh, leveraged on the, on, on, on the local best in terms of coffee. So yes, it is. It is good to benchmark, but I think there's a lot of money which is getting swept away through unnecessary travels, and especially in the name of benchmarking. And, and the, this whole issue of measures and evaluation, I mean, when a benchmark trip is done, there's supposed to be a follow-up process which uh, should be able to establish the gains and in a very practical sense of such a trip. So lack of measures, lack of evaluation, lack of uh, for, uh, um, follow-up and feedback allowed those kind of uh, uh, trips has been uh, has been a major problem mm -hmm. such that uh, people have been taking those trips as a way of making extra money mm -hmm. that is not allowable yeah, that's not allowable and uh, and uh, in my county I'm, I'm quite keen and i want to be very clear even to my members of county assemblies we have to move but we have to move in a calculated sense and in a manner that those people who took us to office can endorse and can be able to share in the benefits. Maybe my final question, uh, question yeah. uh, Governor Wairia, the, the current uh, uh, money being pumped to counties, uh, the first term of devolution we saw uh, governors saying that, you know, they needed an, uh, an additional fund, you know, from the national government to the, uh, the grassroots level. As we are now, how, uh, I mean, do we have enough from the central government or there is need you know to lobby from the executive and even through the legislative arms that is parliament to ensure that that uh, stake is you know increased to uh, a certain level well you see resources are never enough uh, you see you see uh, economics is a study of, uh, of scarcity vis-a-vis uh, -vis choice and uh, and distribution and utilization of very scarce resources resources are supposed to be meager and, uh, and uh, there's no one time when resources will be enough, when money will be enough, either for the national and or the county governments. But uh, what is more important, first and foremost, is to ensure that the literal that is allocated either to national or to county governments is optimally utilized. And I, I think that's the most, uh, uh, I think that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Management for results. We need to see results mm -hmm. of money allocated to both national and county governments. And I think that is what should matter most. Mm -hmm. People, the discussion allowed how much uh, is, is very sweet and very entertaining. But the whole discussion about the impact, mm -hmm. uh, that need to be the subject of discussion. Mm -hmm. That literal, mm -hmm. which is being allocated to counties, and that literal, which is being left at the national government through the ministries and departments, mm -hmm. what has that money done? Mm -hmm. And we need to be very genuine. Mm -hmm. This issue of uh, finger pointing, mm -hmm. you're pointing fingers at counties or at national government, that's rubbish. Mm -hmm. We need to have proper measures and evaluation. Uh, In fact, what needs to happen, there should be some sort of, uh, some sort of uh, 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 impact assessment mm -hmm. 
the same way we have uh, the GDP. Oh, you see the GDP, uh, the GDP uh, style or equivalent of counties. Where are counties now vis-a-vis -vis where we were five years ago? Not the political noise. We need numbers. We have economists in this nation and we need to be, we need to be shown numbers so that we discuss figures and we discuss sense. Not a matter of politicizing issues. Mm -hmm. So we need to ask where are counties and specific counties five years ago vis-a-vis -vis now and the measures must be clear must be scientific must be empirical governor because of time in 30 seconds what do you expect uh, from this uh, president's speech today in 30 seconds briefly well uh in 30 seconds i think uh, i expect a lot of uh, reconciliatory tone uh he's in office the, the, we have 48 governments and one nation which is led by him as the head of state and the head of government so i think uh, we expect uh, uh, we expect a tone which is uh, very conciliatory, uh, bringing together the national and the county government, and even us as governors. That's our position, because uh, we are in office. We want to see this nation going forward, being driven by the 48 governments, in order to create one meaningful national government. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That is uh, Muranga Governor Mwangi Wairia just uh, telling us his expectation and how he as a first a batch of governors handled devolution and so Lillian it's a lot uh, of things at the plates of the governors. We also know that you know there is the politics of the council of governors the election and the change of guard where uh, Josphat Nanok uh, uh, who is the current uh, council of governors uh, chair seeks to defend his seat of course a lot of governors also are eyeing that particular seat and uh, the, the, the seat that is uh, to deputize him and so a lot Lillian are uh, going forward today any moment from now we are expecting President Uhuru Kenyatta to you know come to Diani and officially launch uh, this uh, induction session for the governors and so for now Lillian I'll hand you back I and my guest Mwangi Wairia we will continue to see what uh, will be cutting at this age of Kuala County back to you thanks for that Stephen Leto engaging Mwangi Wairia.